I'm the whistler, and I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales, hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. It was just a routine physical examination for life insurance. Applicant, Martin Heath. Policy, $20,000, Ajax Life. Beneficiary, Sally Heath, wife. Yes, that's all it was, Martin. A quick visit to the doctor's office during lunch hour. So unimportant, you'd have forgotten all about it if Sally hadn't called to remind you. It might have been better if you had forgotten. Nothing would ever be quite the same from now on. X-rays? No, insurance examination. Oh. What'd you do, run into a fast-talking salesman? <laughs> fast-talking girl, I married her. So now you got to take care of a family man, big responsibilities, huh? Oh, I'm not complaining. How long? Hmm? How long have you been married? Oh, it'll be a year tomorrow. Oh. First anniversary, huh? Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Big party? Well, maybe. <laughs> you know you're lucky. You know what I'm going to do tonight? Play poker with a bunch of bums. All right, Mr. Blaine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if anybody ever tells you, uh... Bachelor gets a good shake. Don't believe him, huh, kid? Take care of that girl. I'll do that. <laughs> See you around, kid. All right. You can go now, Mr. Heath. We'll have the result of your blood test at noon tomorrow. Then you can run right over to Ajax and take out your policy. All right. Noon tomorrow? Right. And happy anniversary. Oh, thanks. News gets around, doesn't it? Dr. Chandler? Mr. Heath? Yes, he's here now. All right, I'll tell him. Is the doctor going to be late? Oh, he's on his way from the hospital. Oh. You know, we're making a great mistake being inside today. I just came over through the park. Ah, oh, it's spring out there. Green lawns, flowers, kids playing ball. You know something? It's a great life. What's the matter? Hi. Oh, hi, Bachelor. Happy anniversary, kid. Well, thanks. Um, happy poker game. What's the matter with him? I don't know. Well, how about the examination grades? Do I make Phi Beta Kappa? Well, Mr. Heath, Dr. Chandler wants to talk to you personally. Seven happy anniversaries. Marty.
squashing your orchid. I don't care. Come on. See what your super efficient wife has been doing in her spare time. Candles, champagne, music. Okay? Yeah. Oh, I, I loved your card. Why 87 anniversaries? We're going to have 187, aren't we? What's the matter? Nothing. Not a thing, honey. 187 is just right. You have a hard day? I guess so. I think they work you too hard. You look tired. Well, uh, what's this? A present. I got one for me, too. Go ahead, open it. See? Like them? Yeah, great. Well, you get the idea, don't you? You're a prisoner for life, for 187 years. Marty, something is wrong. No, it's uh, it's nothing, honey. Like I told you, I had a tough day and... Come on, level with me. What is it? I'm sorry, honey, I, I gotta go. Marty, where are you going? Out. Marty! Close in 15 minutes. If you want one for the road... I like... don't want one for the road. Just in time, Jack. Yeah, the usual. Hi. Oh. Hello. How was the anniversary? Great. Just great. Excuse me. What's with the hand? Sardine can. Oh. Look, mister, I don't want to be rude, but would you mind taking your business someplace else? I, I don't feel like talking. I know you don't. Don't run away mad now. It might do you some good to talk. In fact, if I was in your shoes, I'd want to talk to someone. Oh? Yeah. What happened tonight? Couldn't face her, couldn't tell her what the score is. How do you know so much? Well, I saw the lab report in Dr. Chandler's office this afternoon. Report on a blood sample, Zenith Laboratories. Patient Martin Heath. How long did they give you? Three months. Maybe, if I'm lucky. Chandler said there was nothing I could do about it. Three months is it. What about your wife? Good question. Any kids? One on the way. When? About Christmas time. Who's going to take care of them? I wish I knew. So what happens tomorrow? You know you can't fool an insurance company, don't you? Yeah. Marty, do you really love her? Do you really want to take care of her? You got any bright ideas? One. Stud poker. I had a big evening. I'll write your policy, Marty. Ten thousand bucks cash, no questions asked. That ought to take care of them for a while. What's the rest of it? Well, I told you I had a big evening. Too big for the guy I won this from, I guess. He's lying on the floor of his apartment. You mean he's dead. We had a fight.
do you want from me? You only got three months, Marty. What do you got to lose? Ten thousand bucks cash, Marty. All you gotta do is confess to that murder. That's the proposition, isn't it, Mark? Ten thousand dollars, cash on the line. And all Mr. Blaine expects is the rest of your life. Ten thousand dollars will take care of the wounded, Marty. For a while, at least. But you'll have to make up your mind tonight, won't you? Because you told Blaine you'd let him know in the morning. And morning isn't far off, is it? Marty? Hi. Hi. All I can do is ask you to forgive me about tonight. I didn't want it to be this way. I wanted to have a nice anniversary, too. I don't know what got into me. I just suddenly felt like going out, and I did, that's all. You never were a very good liar, Marty. Are you in trouble? No, no. Is it another girl? Oh, no, honey. No, no. It's not another girl. I'm not going to give you a lot of fancy explanations because well, there just aren't any. I just did a crazy thing, that's all. Look, promise me something, will you? What? Don't ask me any more questions. Just believe in me that I love you. That I'm doing what I think is right for you, for both of us. You've got to believe that no matter what happens. Oh, Marty. I've got to know. You've got to tell me. Please, Sally, try to understand. How can I understand something I don't even know about? Oh, Marty, I'm your wife. Don't you understand? I'm your wife. Oh, please, Marty, please, you've got to tell Sally, me. Sally, go to bed. Oh, Marty, please, I'll... Go to bed! Seventh Avenue, apartment 16 on the top floor. The guy's name is Robo, R-O-B-L-E. Did you have to kill him? I told you the stakes were big, too big. The other two guys folded and left. Robo and I played the last hand. Sudden death. I took it. He came after me with a bottle. But that's self-defense. You don't sell that to a jury when you get a record. I'm an ex-con. Well, what's it gonna be? What do I tell him? I have no motive. I don't even know the guy. You found out you were gonna die. You needed some money for your wife. You found out about this poker game in Robo's apartment. You figured there'd be a lot of money lying around. I'll make up a story for you. But the other guy's witnesses. I'll take care of that, too. Well... He knows his business, doesn't he, Marty? Witness number one, Alvy Klein, news dealer, a bookmaker, one of the poker players. Blaine tells the story carefully, 
convincingly. How you arrived just before he left. Told them you'd cashed a paycheck and wanted to sit in. You were still there, playing with Robo, when he walked out. There'd been a few arguments, and once Robo had accused you of cheating. Witness number two, the other poker player, Charlie Shoemaker. It takes Charlie a while to focus on the story, but by the time Jack Blaine is through with him, he knows it word for word, and he'll swear to it in court. Sal Castro, taxi driver. He saw you standing outside the dead man's apartment a few minutes before the murder. The foregoing is a true and complete account of what happened last night in the apartment of Stanley Robo. Marty, what's in there? How did you get here? I've been following you all day. Tell me, what's in there? You've got to get out of here. Not until I find out what's been driving you crazy. Who was that man in the bar and the racetrack place? And what were you doing in the hotel? Sally, Sally, listen, it's too late to do anything now. Do you understand? No, I don't. I'm going to see what's in there, even if I have to go downstairs and get the manager. Sally! Let, let go of me. Listen, listen to me for a minute. Sally, there. There's a dead man in there. Did you? No. Well, then what are you doing? I can't explain now. I, I, I guess it's useless to try and hold out on you, isn't it? Yes. Well, come on, we'll get a taxi. I'll tell you everything on the way home. We could break open the champagne now. It's not very cold, but this is kind of a special occasion, isn't it? I'm sorry, Sally. I should have told you before. I just thought of you as a kid. I didn't think you could take it. Well, Marty, isn't this something we can do? No, they'll, they'll get the letter in the morning. What do we do, sit around and wait? It's a sensible thing, I guess. With three months left, that's being sensible. I don't know. Marty, I'll 
you'll get it. Yes? Sorry to bother you so late, Mr. Heath, then? Well, Mr. Heath doesn't live here. Oh, well, this is his apartment, but he's subletting it to me. My name is Thomas. Well, you have his address. 25 Wellfield Way. 25 Wellfield Way. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Miss Thomas. I'll check on it. Good night. Good night. Where does that get us? Well, I, I just couldn't let him take you. Wonder how they found out so soon. The letter hasn't had time. To... Well, maybe somebody overheard us in Robles' apartment and notified the police. Oh, Marty, Marty, can't we run? Is there anything in the bargain against running away? Honey, the whole countryside will be looking for me tomorrow. Well, it's our three months, not theirs. Where would we go? Anywhere. Just get on a plane. Any plane. You got yourself a deal. Yes, Marty. It's your three months, isn't it? Yours and Sally's. And you find yourself in complete agreement with her that a trip to anywhere is the right thing. The only thing to do. And now you're Mr. and Mrs. Charles Ellison on flight 633 to St. Louis. Six weeks now, hasn't it, Marty? And it's on the front pages. Police seek fugitive in poker game murder. Even in the local papers. Who is it? It's all right, darling. Easy, girl. You won't get your tip. Well, I guess you deserve it. Well, don't let me interrupt your breakfast. Better eat hearty. You got a long trip ahead of you. I suppose you have a pocket full of warrants and extradition papers and so on. Mm, not me. Not my job. Well, who are you? Name's Moeller, private detective. Employed for the past six hilarious weeks by the Zenith Laboratories. Seems they made a pretty bad mistake a little while back. Might have involved them in a damage suit. Marty. Mistake? Yeah, that blood test they made on you. Red and white differential, whatever that means. Your test got mixed with someone else's. And we had to find both parties, and fast. Marty, what have we done? I wish I could help you. You, you mean there's, there's nothing wrong with me? Nothing, except a charge of first-degree murder. Oh, well, Marty, he can't take us. Why, well, we can still... No, no, honey. We're not going anywhere. I'm tired of running. Come back and face it. You've decided that the only thing left is to face the music, haven't you, Marty? Even though you're certain, they'll never believe your story of the phony confession. Sit down, please, Mrs. Heath. So you're Marty Heath, huh? The guy who confessed to a murder and led us a merry chase from here to Havana. I didn't think it was so funny at the time. Well, neither did we until this morning. What do you mean, Lieutenant? The robot killing was pretty ordinary stuff. Except for one very unusual thing. We got two confessions. Both of them sound and solid as rocks. Two confessions? Tell me something. Why do you think Jack Blaine was in Dr. Chandler's office the day you went there for your insurance examination? I don't know. Well, I guess he wanted to do the right thing after all. He told us the whole story. He was the poor guy whose laboratory test got mixed up with yours. He 
died last night.